This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, SliceOnBroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash AwesomeCast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at SidekickMediaServices.com. Hey guys, it is the Awesome Cast. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter right here in the um, uh, uh, hotel, poorly lit hotel in Lincoln, Nebraska. I literally just came off the plane, grabbed my bag, grabbed my car, checked in, set up. We're here. It's mostly working, so sorry if there's any weird stuff. Uh, we're on Wi-Fi. There's a cord over here, but I can't find my cord. I don't know if I packed it yet or not. Uh, but here we are, and we're podcasting. Let's do this. Uh, but uh, and, and and to solve the the long-standing question we've had on this show from early days of the Awesome Cast: Does Nebraska have technology? We've proven it. Or everybody's we in 360, as Chilla said, is completely um, stopped right now in the state of Nebraska. But anyways, with us back home, back home representing in Studio C is John Chichilla. He's the gadget guru at Big Bank International Esquire. And uh, and how you doing, sir? Coming at, us, coming at me in a hot 1080. A hot 1080, a little bit below 4K today. Um, not that I think YouTube actually pushes it, but uh, I think I think it's a good day, a little warm here. What's the weather like there? <laughs> Are we doing weather? Or is that what? Yeah, I, don't know. A, I don't think I've been out. It's the, it's the it's, awesome uh, forecast. It's blue sky. It's 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 in the seventies. It's amazing. I'm told I'm going to melt the next couple of days standing on standing on on the asphalt uh, uh, on an airport for these formula cars the, the next few days. But uh, that's a whole other story. Watch, also with us, yeah. Watch your watch your shoes because I've been in Vegas and had my my sandals melt to the pavement. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> At least I'm not in Phoenix where they can't even uh, get planes off of the ground because it's so hot. And it's actually a really good article. I forget it was in Gadget or Wired uh, that actually had told you why that was. Um, that, that I was reading uh, uh, in my layover in Chicago. Uh, so it was rather appropriate. Also with us from Studio D for Dutters is Katie Dudas, the Dutters. Uh, of course, uh, uh, marketing and social media and such over at the Scare House. You can catch her Thursdays doing live stuff over the Scare House. Fridays. Damn it. <laughs> Damn it, I tried. I tried. How are you doing today? Good. How are you? Good. I'm not jet lagged. Good. Um, apparently, uh, Facebook is not happy that I just checked in from Nebraska because it says that uh, they've locked my account. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. So I'm not joining you guys on Facebook anytime soon. But anyways. Uh, but no, how's it going out there? Good. It's been a well. whole day since I've seen you. I know. <laughs> I see you a ton, and then I don't see you at all. And apparently, I, Missy and I were your whole spring, according to Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, we'll get into some of stuff and, and awesome, awesome things of the week and all that. But please, of course, check everything out at awesomecast.com. Um, check us out on social media, awesomecast on the Twitter, on the Facebook. There's a great awesomecast Facebook group as well. And uh, also, please email us, awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com. Also, shout outs because I'm reading the notes that, that Missy has up here for me. Uh, she's back. She is actually back in the studio. She is in Mayhem Studio supervising this, this shenaniganry going on. And, and, and later tonight, somebody's going to do the Wrestling Mayhem show without me in the studio. We're actually using the studio without me, so we're going to see how that goes. But this show, the Awesome Cast, you can subscribe to us on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, for any podcasty uh, uh, places. And uh, you can check out the video versions, and sometimes we're streaming just like this on Facebook and YouTube. And depends on what's going on, we'll be on one or the other. Typically Facebook, and of course, that's a little bit different tonight. So thank you, everybody, that, that, that did discover us here. Uh, we did say it was going to get a little wonky in the next couple of weeks. So thanks, thanks a lot, everybody, for jumping in here. Um, and checking things out. But anyways, um, let's also thanks to our Patreon supporters, of course. Uh, thank you to our friends, of, of course, uh, Matt Weller, Matt underscore Weller at the five dollar coffee club level, as well as uh, Michael Fedor, Michael Fedor show on the Twitter. Uh, you guys can support the show too at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Uh, but you know, if you want to uh, give us a hand, do something uh, to help make the show grow, uh, give a buck, give 
as little as you need, uh, as little as you want. Uh, if you're digging uh, what we're doing on this show, we really do appreciate it. And we do a lot of other stuff. We have awesome tips, awesome chat, um, all kinds of fun stuff that we're doing here and and, and, and upcoming game uh, in, in, in development on right now, of course. Uh, Patreon.com slash awesomecast. So let's get into our awesome things of the week. Katie, what's your awesome my awesome thing of the week. Um, so Instagram is slowly making improvements for us, which I'm excited about. I mean, there's still some things that I would have rather had happen first, but um, Instagram in the stories feature, if you ever done, have done an Instagram live video, it's only live for that moment and then it's gone. And which is kind of, is okay. Cause it's fun. Cause you could put things out there that maybe you don't want a lot of people to see, but then if you have a really great conversation, like we did, um, we were down in the basement shooting something um, for Scarehouse, and uh, we had a lot of great questions, and the whole thing was gone, and there was nothing you can do about it after it's done. It's, it's live, and when it's done, it's over, but they've added a replay option for live videos, so you are able to replay that video in 24 hours, which That's is awesome. super cool. That's awesome. It's, so, it's, it's a definitely improvement. <laughs> so it, it's more of a it, it's it seems to be more of a uh, this, so this is kind of bringing it over kind of Oops, sorry I, I don't know if I broke up or you broke up I think it's him oh probably me uh, so it's bringing it over to like, kind of the Paris and replay videos for a little bit. yeah it's for um, you can replay for twenty four hours um, before making them permanently saveable so you can actually or never mind it's twenty four hours yeah they'll be around for twenty four hours. I don't think they're savable yet. Sorry, but they just look like they'll be around for 24 hours. So in that time, you can figure out a way to save. If you really want to save them, you can figure them out in 24 hours. Um, at least, uh, at least I'm looking at, at some of the screenshots on the TechCrunch article, that, and hit a button on the live video end of the screen. So there might be a download function for that. Uh, so uh, cool. I, I give. Uh, uh, Chilla, what's your awesome thing of the week? So IKEA announced uh, earlier this week, uh, yesterday, that they're going to be one of the launch partners for Apple's AR. Um, one of the things you're going to be able to do in the IKEA app is actually pan around your, your house, uh, any of the space in there, and you're going to be able to uh, take any of the Ikea furniture and fit it into whatever space or it'll actually be able to tell based on the, the space and size dimensions of the room if a specific piece of furniture would fit. Um, it was interesting in some of the articles I was reading about how many companies actually have to have have to do uh, 3D renderings, kind of CAD type renderings of all of their furniture or all of whatever they're selling uh, for various reasons. So I think this is a good sign that we're not just going to see Ikea um, jumping on this technology, but you're probably going to see a lot of other manufacturers of goods um, allowing you to do this with their apps. Um, I think it's interesting for Ikea to make such a, a wide um, announcement so early on, I mean, we're still in beta one. The beta has been out for, I think, what, two, two weeks. Um, so I think this is a good sign of if IKEA is announcing their, their themselves being a launch partner, I can only imagine what we're going to see in September when the phone actually comes out and see all the other companies jumping on this. I mean, we've already heard Pokemon going in this direction. Uh, I, I just think this is a great sign of things to come along with the fact that I'm starting to read a lot of articles uh, about how Apple is leapfrogging Microsoft's position in the AR space. They showed something kind of similar to this in one of their last announcements, but, it, but it's interesting. I mean, it's something typical we see out of Apple. They, they wait to really talk about something till there's a lot of fit, finish, and polish on it. Um, and then they leapfrog the competition that's been kind of uh, struggling with with different types of visors or glasses or anything like that. So, so I'm, I'm definitely happy to see the partnership, and I, and I think it's only a good sign of things to come. Awesome. I, I, throw, my, I throw my video quality low, so hopefully that helps our connection here. Um, so uh, no, I, I think that's really cool. Uh, wow, my video is real low now, uh, but <laughs> I think that's re <laughs> that's really cool to see these kind of practical applications happening um, already with these uh, with these guys. 
Well, and what and I was thinking about you, Sorg. Right, you go to a lot of venues where you have to set up. Um, it mm -hmm. would be interesting to see. Could you kind of mock up what what you need to put in a space, and then kind of figure out how that would fit around the room? I I think we've heard um, Alex Lindsay kind of talk about that, right? Taking pictures and then try to try to figure out the dimension of something in the room to then kind of try to figure out what he can fit where. Um, I think this is only something that, that people like yourselves can also use going forward. I'd love to see, um, I, it maybe clean that a little bit. I'd like to see something where, you know, we had a shoot on Monday morning and, uh, you know, I just wanted to see what the setup was, what the space was. So I'm not going in and kind of making decisions on uh, where to put cameras to begin with, right? Uh, so, so I, I guess, I guess what I'm looking for is more a VR thing that can drop in and say, okay, here's the sight line. Here's what it looks like with everything set up and people in a kind of situation. Right. Um, but no, I, I can see that too. I can see that, you know, kind of event planning thing. Um, if you're setting up for, for something like that and getting that kind of nice, nice space. Right. Um, mm -hmm. you know, just like, just like the Ikea thing does. So no, I can see this used for video sets, um, all kinds of video sets. Um, we're hell. We're looking at uh, a space, and we're kind of figuring out. Okay, where where is everything going to go? It'd be great to kind of drop in there and kind of figure out. You know, this is where we need to put lights. This is where a uh, uh, desk needs to go. Microphone set up. Cameras go over here. Um, kind of advance. So no, I'd love to see this thing kind of expand in that direction, and hopefully we see more um, applications like this. So I need an awesome thing, don't I? <laughs> I think you do. <laughs> Uh, let me say, I know I heard a bunch of, uh, I know I know I threw a bunch of stuff out this week. You know, uh, my awesome thing this week um, is probably going to be, um, I, I saw a couple articles, so it's kind of a, a more an awesome theme of the week. Uh, first of all, news, locally, our, our good friends at Academy Pittsburgh are announcing their fourth cycle, uh, so go apply for that if you want to be a coder. It's a boot camp. You don't have to have, I, I guess, hardly any knowledge going into it. Um, our friend Kalani Cook, actually, uh, she was, uh, uh, what was she at? Uh, uh, she was not anywhere near science and technology in in in, in her uh, 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 college teachings, right? Uh, but she went to the boot camp, and now she's doing tremendous stuff, and has had some great opportunities since. Um, but uh, two stories: uh, first, Fuse Code Studio will let kids use the Switch to code their own Switch games. So great spot for kids to get into that, right? Um, and secondly, the Girl Scouts are training next generation female hackers. Who's training generation? the next generation? The Girl Scouts. Oh. So it, it, it's interesting because according to this article over on uh, Vice, broadly.vice.com, I guess, um, it, it, they're actually kind of teaching her, teaching them to, to uh, become white hat, white hat hackers of a sort. So, so again, just this kind of theme of just learning and coding, and 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 kids are really getting down and dirty with with technology. In these ways, it's very cool. So, yeah, I think I think the boy. I don't know if it's the Girl Scouts and the Boy Scouts. I I swear I've seen like where patches they they can earn patches for like social media and blogging and things like of that nature. So it's interesting co op team play. Um, so it's interesting to see them kind of go after this area as well. Absolutely. Um, so, I mean, it, it kind of makes sense, you know, with everything going on out there. And, and, you know, get them young. I mean, these kids that are learning now and more of them that got opportunities. Why, why, why are people, you know, are Bill Gates or Steve Jobs, why are they, were they such outliers? Because they touched this stuff this young because they had a, a weird early interest or the right timing or something like that, right? Um, you know, if we're, we're given opportunities, this young to so many, you know, imagine what that's going to develop into 20 years from now when these kids start getting out into the world in mass, you know, and, and, and no, you know, no, no coding the way that we knew how to use a mouse, you know, <laughs> uh, it, it's really cool to see. So, uh, but in the fuse code, uh, I want to touch on that a little bit more, um, yeah, it's using Switch itself. Here's a little picture for you guys over on video. I'll toss this over to you. Uh, but yeah, it looks like they're throwing, um, you know, kind of a keyboard, kind of, I don't know, maybe that's a soft keyboard or something. And it, it is actually, uh, uh, so Fuse Basic is coming, and uh, it, let's say it's, it's kind of aimed to, 
make some pretty simple things. Uh, there's another one called Smile Basic on the 3DS. I think there's a different company that did this. Um, so, you know, it, it's not it's not to the point where you're coding like an Unreal or a Unity Engine game on here, but it's it's still like a nice starting point. And really, I don't think you can just throw a kid into something like that, right? Not that I'm aware of. Mm -mm. Not that you're aware of, yeah. So, well, with that, um, you know one thing I don't have out here? <laughs> Neither do we at our places. Yeah, uh, I'm, a little, I'm a little short on that too. <laughs> well, typically when we're in studio and everything's uh, uh, going normally, uh, we're, we're, we're treated to a uh, slice on Broadway from, from our good friends over there in the Beachview neighborhood. We're actually hit, we actually had a pizza party this past weekend. Uh, so uh, a few friends and, and fans of the show, of Wrestling Mayhem Show and Awesome Cast, uh, came out and we got to uh, hang out and have some pizza with them. So uh, thank you so much for those guys. Well, just being just being gracious, gracious hosts and uh, you know great service and, and and such out there over in Slice on Broadway, Beachview, and of course there's uh, other locations, the Main Street and Carnegie PA, Carnegie PA, and uh, and of course uh, over. Uh, uh, PNC Park, home of the Pittsburgh Pirates, uh, where they made recently because the Penguins were in, uh, and and they made uh, Rico down there made a Stanley Cup, a Doe Stanley Cup. I believe is on our Instagram, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so go go check that out. Um, actually, maybe it's just their Twitter. But anyways, uh, thanks thanks so much to those guys down there. SliceOnBroadway.com. Check them out. Let them know the awesome cast sent you. Katie, what, what, you got some other stuff in this uh, lineup here. Uh, uh, let me know what you, what's kind of catching your attention this week. Well, I guess it's, we're back into uh, like game-related things, but Twitch has an exclusive deal with Blizzard for 20 major esports events. And I thought the interesting thing about this article, besides the fact that this is super cool, um, esports tournaments have been watched by three more than 320 million people with viewership op over 90% in 2016. They said... Um, there are about 100 million users watching content in Twitch every month. And the company details that nearly half of its users spend more than 20 hours per week with the service. So this is like the place to be, Twitch, <laughs> right now. Wow, that's awesome. So, so I mean, they're, they're getting a little bit of competition, aren't they? Because Microsoft has their own one, and then there's a couple other ones. YouTube's trying to get into the gaming space. I mean, Twitch... Mm -hmm for the most part. It'll be interesting to see where Twitch can go, what, go with this, if they're going to be kind of the major eSports vendor and then everyone's going to be kind of a come and go as you please. I, I, <clears throat> I'm hoping they, much like every, a lot of things I talk about, they, they kind of push everything forward. Twitch mm -hmm. th seems like a nice universal platform. I think it, you were talking about Microsoft. What's their platform, Beam, I think you were saying. Um, yeah. It'll be interesting to see how you know single consoles obviously sony's not going to create a platform that microsoft can use and vice versa i think twitch mm -hmm. has a has an easy in here as being kind of the cross cross platform player what i'd like to see them do is a little more with the mobile gaming um allow some of that allow more streaming of a mobile device without a lot of extra hardware or, or trickery behind the scenes i i know iOS and Android have both made strides in allowing um, game makers to kind of add, uh, I think in iOS it's called Replay Kit. Um, I'll be interested to see how they, uh, how they kind of move into that mobile arena. Even something like, I don't know, what is the um, Nintendo Switch? Is there anything for that or how does that work? I don't think currently there's there's anything ready to go on mm -hmm. a Nintendo Switch. Uh, uh, for for all it's been doing, I think I think the Switch is still very casual. We broke the sword. <laughs> <laughs> or, or or sword broke Nebraska. <laughs> if, 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 I, if I all right, we're back. I, if I freeze, just go on without me. Okay. <laughs> I'll never let go. <laughs> I, I, for, from here on, I'm going to be like, and I think what Sorg was trying to say. Absolutely. <laughs> that's the way to do it. So so you, we were talking about the Switch. What do you, Does the Switch have anything that you're aware of? No, no, I don't think so. Okay. 
I'm guessing you could do the same type of thing where you you hook it up to one of the because the the switch obviously has kind of an HDMI out, obviously, so you can play it on TV. I'm I'm, I'm guessing you could take um, a capture card or something of the sort um, to kind of capture that gameplay. I know early on, um, what did we look at? Elgato had like some of those frame grabbers, and they even had in their software kind of allowed you to stream out to. Um, areas like or companies like twitch so I'm, I'm guessing you could do that but hopefully nintendo and maybe even twitch kind of partner up and and we get some more uh, additional uh content providers uh, able to stream their their games absolutely uh john tell me a little bit about what paypal is doing so uh, interesting uh, to me um being kind of in the banking industry uh paypal i think made a uh formal announcement yesterday that they weren't overly concerned about Apple um, allowing money transfer through iMessage uh, right after the Apple announcement. Also, a bunch of banks made some statements that they were working on their own internal money transfer applications that would be inherent in their their mobile apps, uh, banking apps, that is. Uh, PayPal announced today that they're launching instant money transfers directly to bank accounts. Um, so you're going to be able to sounds like from from what I'm, I'm hearing you're going to be able to take money um, and transfer it um, from like one credit card and directly into a bank account um, they are charging a 25 cent per transaction fee um, I'm interesting to see how Apple kind of answers back to this we didn't hear about there being any fee for me to transfer uh, money from me to you over iMessage the one thing that they did say um, Apple did say was they that your money when when I transfer money to you it's going going to go onto your Apple Pay card cash card um, and then it's up to you to transfer that money back to your bank or to wherever um, I'm hoping I'm sure they hope that it's going to get tied up in iTunes purchases but uh, and maybe they'll charge you some kind of fee per transaction or some type of percentage like they do with with Apple Pay back to the to the banks and and people actually doing the money transfer. But it, but again, I think it's going to be interesting to see PayPal's already answering back. The banks are already answering back. What's this going to mean when, when Apple does launch iOS 11 and starts with those I, or iMessage money transfers? Uh, yeah, it'll be interesting. Uh, we're, we're going to have kind of a instant payment wars here, aren't we? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I, I just view it as that, I mean, that's going to be the easy way. I mean, I don't carry cash as it is now. And a lot of times if someone says, hey, um, I don't have cash on me and you're out at dinner, it's you're either trying to get the restaurant to split the bill or you're saying, oh, I'll buy this time, you buy next time. Now, I think we're going to see a lot of these types of payment transfers to take off because it's going to be an easy way to, to transfer money on the fly. Yeah, and, and I think, you know, versus the current Apple Pay, uh, the bank that I want to use still doesn't support it. So, yeah. so having something like like PayPal, right? Like, like PayPal is really easy because at least it kind of accesses that account, and and it just makes things easier, right? Like 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 it should be doing. Um, so, I don't know. I, I I'm I'm kind of open to more options and not ones that are like. I don't know if I want a Venmo account. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, but, uh, but yeah, no, looking forward to see what's up with that. Uh, Katie, uh, yeah, you got another story here. You want to touch base on drones? Yeah. <laughs> so I really, I felt bad because I didn't have a porn story for us this week. <laughs> so I started just quickly looking on the internet. And of course, this really has nothing to do with technology besides the fact that they were using drones to drop drugs and porn into prisons. <laughs> and it made oh, me geez. laugh. Yes, a new re news report from USA Today found that drones have been used more than a dozen times to fly contraband into federal prisons over the last five years. And they're figuring out because they cause fights, because they drop things in there, and they crash on occasion. <laughs> That's how you catch them. Hey, wait, has the drone has the drone episode of Orange is the New Black happened yet? I haven't caught up with this season yet. I don't think so. That's amazing. That would be amazing. It only makes sense. Wow. It only makes sense. They're making like six thousand dollars per drop. The drones, the guys 
piloting the drones. Hey, there you go. Side well, business. That pays for like, like three drones, depending on what kind you get, right? So it makes sense. Oh, no, it absolutely makes sense. Hey, anytime supply and demand, absolutely. I mean, or or this is just the beta test for Amazon Prime Air. Yeah. <laughs> that would be amazing. These are all just Amazon drones. Yes. <laughs> We're testing it somewhere and see if it gets caught. It's a pass-fail system. So, <laughs> absolutely. Um, did, did I tell you guys about the drone um, in Peoria that was following me around? No. Uh, so, they had um, video. They were doing a live stream, and they were using IP cameras, I think in conjunction with the guys that we talked about, uh, Mike Zeman um, over, over um, uh, on Awesome Chat uh, a few weeks ago. And... Uh, yeah, so they had a camera, they had an IP camera attached to it, and it kept buzzing over my head, and it just felt like I was getting uh, about to get sworn by a, a swarm of bees because um, it was so loud. It was like a nice, you know, $5,000 unit and everything like that, and dude must have had stacks of batteries because it was going all day long. So, you know, you go down, you do something, and it go back up maybe about 20 minutes later. Uh, so it was it was kind of interesting to see see that, that in progress, I guess, uh, during the event last week. Uh, Katie, so I, I was, you know, doing airports today, obviously, yeah. killing some time. I, I was walking, uh, okay, I was say walking. I was doing the, 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 the uh, what do you call them, the uh, uh, person, the people movers uh, up and down from Pokestop to Pokestop at the Pittsburgh airport, and I was sad to see that all the gyms are closed. Yeah, because they're getting updates. I really, there's a, the, the link I shared from TechCrunch really explains them very well, like what's changing and what's coming up. Um, the gyms are changing. They're going to have competitive, um, more like, um, so you get up six Pokemon as opposed to just the couple. Uh, you can only have so many, only one of each Pokemon will be allowed at a time to essentially run in the gym. No more gyms filled with like 10 Dragonites, which was one of the examples they gave. Um, you can hold up to six slots. Uh, you can actually, there's, um, What's it called? Uh, competitive raid. That's what they're calling it. A uh, glowing egg appears on top of a gym. There's a countdown clock. When it hits zero, the egg hatches. Ultra rare Pokemon emerges. And then there's a fight. Like, you'd have up to 20 people try to take it down. And then depending on how many hits you got in, you may actually capture this Pokemon. So it's, like, some... I think this is things. great. There's something, maybe I missed what you're saying. There's something with raid tickets, right? You have to, you, there's certain tickets you can buy and there's certain tickets you can earn. Yeah, because there's now raid tickets. Like if you, you know how whenever you go to a Pokestop and you spin it and you get items, you can go to a gym now and spin it and raid tickets will pop up. And I noticed so where I work downtown, um, the, on Grant Street, the Mellon building, the Mellon Park has a, uh, a gym. I noticed yesterday, and I put it out on Twitter, um, the uh, water fountain outside of the UPMC slash US Steel building um, now has a gym there. So I'm wondering, are they, I'm guessing they're building more gyms or moving gyms. I'm not sure which. Which it excites me. Yeah, it, it, maybe they're they're finally getting around to all those uh, gym submissions from from Ingress back in the day. Yeah, that have been backlogged for so long. So, um, I, I mean, to mix it up, I mean, the last time we saw gyms pop up again were you know when Boost Mobile and Starbucks started doing them right as a promotion, and and I haven't seen anything other than that really do it. Uh, I guess McDonald's in Japan or something was one of the first. So um, either way, I, I think it's a nice fresh up um, uh, from the images we were looking at. I, I think it does a, a lot to freshen up that interface, of course. Uh, so no, I, I mean, I'm still playing it. So I was sad I couldn't find my Pokemon uh, uh, band before I uh, uh, left left this morning uh, for, for this trip. So definitely die hard into it. Uh, uh, Chachi is, is um, I'm certain catching Caribbean <laughs> Pokemon right now on his honeymoon. Uh, so, you know, I, it's still, it's still pretty big and they got a big event. I got my, my notice for the invite for the big event they're doing in Chicago. Uh, so I might have to come back to Chicago now. Uh, so no, it, it's still rocking. And I think they're, 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 it's a good pace to keep people interested or at least coming back. 
So, well, on that note, uh, wow. Well, oh, go ahead. Uh, the only question I was going to have, and did they did they mention when the upgrades are going to be done? Days in the upcoming days. days. Is what it was, yeah. Because <laughs> it was soon. soon. Yeah, soon. I, I was wondering if they do it with that the, that thing in Chicago you were talking about, or how that would parlay with that. The interesting thing that I've actually seen, and let me know if you guys see anything over the coming days, is when the transition first started. Um, like the when you would tap on a gym, you could tell whatever whatever code they used to to in in their actual coding to to show that a gym was being upgraded. It, it was like a bunch of words with underscores in between it as one long string of characters. And then I've seen over hmm. time, I can't remember what the message is now. When you look at a gym that's that's all grayed out, but it seems like the, that messaging is getting better over time. So I wonder if that's a sign that as gyms get upgraded, are we going to see a change? Hopefully it's quicker than weeks. Yeah. Yeah. We can only hope. Right. <laughs> so um, yeah. Cause it, it gives me one less thing to do when on trips like this, you know, um, you know, I was, I was kind of excited. I'm like, there's two gyms here at the, you know, the middle of the, the, the airport and, and I can't do any of them. I finally had time to kind of, you know, you know, do something with them and, and everything, but it, there's good stuff coming. So, so at least there's something to look forward to with it. So, well, guys, um, I mentioned how we don't have access to pizza, but I, unfortunately somebody producer Missy sends me a message during the show here uh to to let us know that oh wait why isn't it coming up hold on hold on it's not coming up as a thing we we'll have to save it here but uh you know what we'll just we'll just kind of do this here for you guys on vi- i know this is just for you guys on on video so uh but uh there there's there's missy chowing on some uh, slice on broadway pizza yeah. thank you so much for that thank you so much for that uh so <laughs> Uh, thank you so much, guys. I, I know uh, this is the last, hopefully, of, for a while of these oddball. I'm going. He's saying thank you. For I think. Yeah, I think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think we really broke him. <laughs> what Sorg is trying to say is, <laughs> thank you for being an awesome audience. <laughs> Have an awesome week, right, Sorg? <laughs> I need I need a sword on a stick so I can just kind of wave it up and down. <laughs> yeah. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.